Welcome to Mental Game Mastery, where we dive into the world of sports psychology and peak performance designed for you to level up your athletic career. What sets apart the great athletes? Great athletes are fanatically consistent with a few strategic habits. Hey there, athletes. I'm your host, Coach P, bringing you mental performance insights and stories from being in the trenches of athletic coaching. As a mental performance coach, I get the privilege to work with all athletes across all sports. So it's a new year, a new quarter, or right now, we can adjust our process in order to get the desired outcome that we want. So I'm kicking off a series called The Eight Habits of Great Athletes. And I'm starting with a habit that can truly transform your days to set you up for success. Now, there is a lot of talk online about getting up at 4.30, 5.30, or 6.30 in the morning, but how does that apply to athletes that may finish competition late at night when rest and recovery matters? So I'm taking the habit of getting up early and calling it the habit of getting stuff done. Because let's be honest, waking up at whatever time, that's the first challenge we face each day. For high-performing athletes, how you wake up can have a massive impact on your training, your mindset, and your performance. Hitting that snooze button might seem tempting, but it can actually set a tone of procrastination and delay for your entire day. When you resist the snooze button, and it doesn't matter what time of day, and you get up with your first alarm, you're making a statement that you're in control and you're ready to take on the day. Because it's more than just about mastering your morning routine. This habit of getting stuff done applies to doing what we're supposed to do when we are supposed to do it. This is not just about getting out of bed. It's about the consistency of playing offense with your day. So how do you develop this habit? Well, here are a few practical tips. Number one, it starts with your PM routine and know that it counts twice. So prepare the night before. Knowing what's ahead can reduce anxiety and create win streaks for getting stuff done. Number two, set strategic reminders throughout the day for when you're supposed to get stuff done. And number three, create a morning routine that works for you. Whether it's a morning cold plunge, mobility, yoga, journaling, or all the above, have a morning routine that you enjoy. Okay, it's the morning, so maybe semi-enjoy. Adopting the get stuff done habit is more than just waking up. It's about setting yourself up for a day of focused, intentional, purposeful action. Implement a little at a time. I think where the struggle comes in is we tend to do a complete overhaul at once. Small changes create big impact. As high-performing athletes, it's these small wins that lead to major successes. And now for habit number two, imagine you're at the peak of your season. Games are back-to-back, training is intense, and the pressure's mounting. Every decision you make can be the difference between a win or a loss. This is where the habit of pre-deciding steps in. Pre-deciding means making key decisions before they need to be made. It's about planning your moves in advance, reducing the mental load when it's game time. But what does this look like for an athlete? Okay, let's break it down. First, let's talk about your routine. Elite athletes swear by their routines. Why? Because routines are a series of pre-decided actions. Routine, discipline, or whatever you'd like to call it, it matters. So let's take a listen to the captain, Derek Jeter, talk about routines and discipline in his Hall of Fame career. But the one thing that's most noticeable is the beard. When did the beard come about? Lockdown. COVID. You know, I got a little bit lazy. You know, you think about it, man, because of the rules we had in New York, you know, I had never gone more than a day without shaving. They still do that. Rules. Rules. I mean, you got to have rules. Teaches you discipline. Rules and discipline, how much did that play into your success? Ah, uh, it's all discipline, you know what I mean? You have to have a routine. You know, I had a routine, I had a ritual. I think I've told you this before, my biggest fear in life is being unprepared. I think the way you are prepared is you stick to a, a ritual. You know, I did it every single day for parts of 20 years. You know, I knew what worked for me and I was going to stick to it. Good times, bad times, success or failure, I was sticking with my routine. Rules. You got to have rules. Rules mean discipline. And as Jocko says, discipline equals freedom. But pre-deciding is for your training, your diet, your recovery, 
It's deciding ahead of time. It's about eliminating decision fatigue, removing the small everyday decisions so you can focus on the bigger decisions that need to be made. So how can you start building this habit? Well, just like habit number one, it begins the night before. Plan your day, plan your meals, plan your training, write it down, and do this exercise of planning out your week on a Sunday evening. Obviously, this isn't ideal because there are things in life that happen that you have no control over. But having a plan eliminates leaving your preparation to chance. For high-performing athletes, the margin for error is pretty slim. The habit of pre-deciding can be your separator. It frees up mental energy and will sharpen your focus. And now for habit number three, you're tired. The pressure is immense. You're in a performance slump. You have athletic and life decisions to make. There is always the easy choice. But here's where the true test of your character comes in. Choosing the hard right over the easy wrong. The habit of choosing the hard right is about making choices that align with your values and your goals, even when they're the tougher option. For athletes, this could mean extra hours of practice. This could mean making social sacrifices or stepping out of your comfort zone to help the team. It's about discipline. It's about resilience. And most importantly, it's about your vision. Great leaders in sports don't just think about the next play. They are thinking about the next season, their career, and the legacy they want to leave. In your athletic journey, you're always going to face challenges and obstacles. When you face these challenges, you'll have two options, the easy wrong or the hard right. There's always the temptation to take the easy way out, but don't. The amateur athlete will ask, what's the easy way? The pro athlete asks, what's the right way? Many amateur athletes avoid the hard right because it makes life more difficult in the short term. But the difference between where you are and where you want to be might just be the short-term pain you're unwilling to endure. The great athletes understand that they aren't working for what makes tomorrow easier for them. They are working toward what makes tomorrow easier for the team and their family. Apply the habit of the hard right to every area of your life. Choose to take the hard right. Consistently invest in yourself, even when you don't have to. You'll never regret doing the hard right, but you'll often regret looking for and choosing the easy button. So what can you take away from this? Start by identifying areas in your training or lifestyle where you might be opting for the easy wrong. Challenge yourself to make a change, not all at once, but one hard right decision at a time. Remember, it's these hard right choices that separate good athletes from great athletes. Now for our last habit, habit number four. This one is as challenging as it is rewarding. The habit of there you are leadership. Part of my role as a mental performance coach is leadership development. I've spent just as much time in the corporate environment as I have in locker rooms and on practice fields and in coaches' offices. In sports, leadership isn't just about being the best player on the field or the court. It's about how you build your team. And when I talk about there you are leadership, we're looking at those who lead by example, those who put the team's needs ahead of their own. Because the natural inclination of leadership is to look inward towards self. It's about me. I kick off and end the team meeting. I get the credit when things are going well. I place the blame when things are going poorly. But as you rise in your levels of influence as an athlete, the habit of there you are leadership will help you intentionally fight the self-centeredness. The leaders who get the most out of the people around them are those who care the most about the people around them. It really matters that you actually care about people. And that care has to start in your heart before your teammates and the people in your life will feel it. One of the best examples I can think of in terms of the habit of there you are leadership, is the late pitcher Daryl Kyle, who passed away unexpectedly in 2002. On the days he wasn't scheduled to start, he would pick a teammate to spend time with and encourage that day. You can read the article in the description to see what type of legacy Kyle has left. Okay, but what if, what if you don't like some of your teammates? Well, as a team captain, a leader, or really the entire team, you have two options. Number one is you have the wrong people on the team. 
but more than likely, your head coach or the GM put the team together. So your team is a combination of what your coach has created and what you and your teammates have tolerated. And number two, you have the right people, but you haven't led them well. You might have talented teammates, but you haven't led them to fit the culture, to have strong work ethic, or have buy-in for the mission of the team or the organization. And here's the part that stings. Both of these situations are on us or on you. And here's the punchline. You don't have to like someone to care about them. You can love and respect someone without liking them. If you want to start living with the habit of there you are leadership, start every interaction with the other person in mind. But how can you as an athlete cultivate this habit? Well, here's some practical tips. Number one, practice empathy. Start by understanding your teammates' strengths, your teammates' weaknesses, and their motivations. Number two, communication. We live in a head-in-your-phone world where knowing the people around us is a lost art. It's not just about talking. It's about listening. Have conversations. Be a Daryl Kyle. Spend time with a teammate a day to see what their story is. Number three, celebrate others. Make it a habit to acknowledge and celebrate your teammates' successes, both big and small. Number four, lead by example. Actions speak louder than words. Take a page out of the New Zealand All Blacks culture playbook. Sweep the shed. The All Blacks have a tradition for the player of the game to be the person to pick up the locker room after everyone has left. You could also be the first to arrive at practice and the last to leave. And always look to where you can help out. By incorporating these practices into your daily routine, you're not just becoming a better leader. You're also solidifying the culture of the team. Being a legendary athlete goes beyond individual accolades. As we wrap up, remember that leadership is not me-centered. It's about how well you elevate those around you. Start practicing a couple of these habits today. Watch how it transforms not just your game, but your teammates, your coaches, and those within your household. Thank you for tuning in to Mental Game Mastery today. I truly appreciate it. If you found this insightful and helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video, with, and don't be shy. Be sure to share your own strategies for your mental game and how you show great leadership in the comments section. And until next time, stay composed, be a leader, look to perform at your best when it matters most, and remember, the time is now.